infinite complacency. People went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Welcome to another episode of Into the Fray. If you're new here, I hope you're enjoying it enough to head to your podcatcher of choice to rate and review the show. This helps it aggregate across the listening platforms, which will turn into more people willing to come on and share their encounters. If you've been listening for years, I'd ask that you please do the same. Home base for Into the Fray is intothefrayradio.com. There you will find all episodes, blog posts, and get bonus content info. Speaking of that bonus content, on top of the free weekly show, I also produce bonus content for Patreon and Apple Podcasts Premium. On either platform, you get all bonus audio episodes and early releases, each one ad-free, of course. Full disclosure, though, Patreon has a bit more in the way of perks because of their interface. Over there, you will get video versions of patron-only chats, e-private Discord channel, and merch at certain pledge levels. So head to patreon.com slash into the fray or your Apple Podcatcher app to sign up for bonus content today. You can find me on the big three social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Linktree link in each of my bios will take you to all the places you want to venture regarding ITF, including small town monsters documentaries, various ways to listen to the show, beyond the fray books, contact info for me, and more. And lastly, and really honestly, most importantly, if you'd like to share your encounter or encounters on Into the Fray, the best way to get in touch is by emailing me at shannon at intothefrayradio.com. And without further ado, Let's get to the interview. Well, do you want to dive into some of these kind of, there's a list of kind of, you know, random high strange goodness here. Sure. Yep. That's the weird one. And I don't know. I, yeah, I can get into this. When I was a kid, I would have these times and it usually happened when I was really, really tired. You know, we'd be at grandma and grandma's place late or something. And I would start having these reoccurring dreams. It was always odd. And I would be awake when they'd start. They were definitely like almost nightmares or night terror kind of things because it freaked me out. But I would start. I The one memory I have is riding home, heading from my grandmother's place to home. And I was. I was awake, but, it, you know, I was kind of tired and nodding out and stuff. And I kept having this reoccurring dream of being on a hill and this giant penny rolling down the hill at me like it was just going to squash me. I mean, this penny was like 12 feet tall and foot wide. And, and it was, a, you know, a scary kind of dream. And I would always have it when I was, like I said, really tired. And I don't know. I have no clue. It It probably quit when I was high school-ish maybe junior high. I don't know. And, and then I would have these other incidents where I'd wake up and it, it was like almost a sleep paralysis kind of thing. It was like, I'd wake up and I couldn't move, but I had this real weird feeling too, that all of my limbs were like super large. And I think I wrote it down, but like I was, I read, grew up reading comic books and I always 
referred to it as like being like the thing and from the fantastic four the big orange rock guy that you know he had those massive arms and and fingers and legs and stuff but i'd be laying in bed and it just felt like i was my limbs were just five times ten times bigger than they were and then i'd lay there and it would be kind of freaky and stuff and then it would just kind of fade out and maybe that's just general sleep paralysis i don't know but it was odd and it didn't and that that i think the last reoccurrence i had of that was i was an adult and i it used to freak me out but i was an adult i woke up and that kind of happened and i just kind of wrote it out and it just kind of went away and then i have not experienced it since but i'm not sure what to make of it right well it's got to be a relief when it stops i know a lot of people go through that yeah yeah but it was just it was odd and i uh, like I said and i i don't have any you know experiences of shadow people around or you know alien type things or that kind of stuff so i don't know i never had that relation with that kind of stuff so i don't don't equate it with that it was just kind of an odd thing and i couldn't ever really pin you know, a trigger or a precursor on it. It would just kind of happen kind of randomly. Right. I don't know what that means. And then, yeah, the the freakiest thing that I have ever had happen was I was in my 20s. I'm living at home, going to college. And, you know, we had an older house. And so we didn't really have air conditioning. And so in the summers, we had screens on the windows, but we'd have the windows open and then like fans in our rooms and stuff. And it was, I woke out of a dead sleep, no real reason or anything. And I just happened to look at the window, my bed where I laid my head faced the window. I happened to look out the window and there's just this face in the window. And it was a big blocky face. And it was like white. I definitely froze. It was just like, I definitely went into panic mode and and I'm just laying there stock still and just wide eyed and staring at this face. And I'm laying there and I'm like, well, it must be the moon shining on his face. Cause it was like, it was like flower white or, you know, like powdered sugar white kind of thing. But then I happened to look in the background and I could see the moon behind it up in the sky. And so then I really freaked out because I'm like, oh, my God, what the hell? And so I'm laying there and I don't know how long I laid there. And we and I think it made eye contact and we just kind of stared back and forth. And then all of a sudden it just pulled back away from the window and faded into the darkness. And I never heard anybody walking back there. I never it wasn't like somebody who was just you know, peep and Tom or anything like that. It was, I don't know. It was weird. And then the next morning I got up and I was telling my mom about it. And, and she kind of stopped and paused and she said, well, you know, when you were a kid, you used to talk about seeing this guy you called the moon man. So then I'm just totally freaked out. And I was asking her stories and, you know, or more information and stuff. And she said, you would just get freaked out in your room sometimes. And you'd come running into our room and talking about the moon man at the window. She said that even one time you said he came in and sat on the end of your bed. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, no, it it freaked me out. And, and. Other than that, I have no recollection of the stuff when I was a little guy, but it, it still kind of freaks me out just even talking about it. It's odd, and I don't know what to make of that either. I mean, did you try to just lump that in with some of your sleep paralysis stuff, or do you feel like this was something different and something that you were actually seeing? I think it was something I was actually seeing. I, I, I mean... I couldn't move, so it was probably I was in some form of sleep paralysis. But even, I don't know, when it pulled away from the window, I mean, I just stared at the window for a while. And then after a while, I was able to move my arms and legs and stuff, but I didn't even get out of bed. I just stayed there, and and then eventually I went back to sleep. So I, I do not believe it was something I was dreaming about. 
I think I was fully awake when all of that was going on. It was not, you know, something that I was dreaming. But no, it, and that it means a lot to me to hear you say that because of the fact that, especially for a self-soothing type of a situation, it would be so much better and easier for you mentally yeah. to say, well, oh, yeah, I, yeah just... I think I really was asleep and I dreamed that. Right. And I do kind of have that history of sleep paralysis kind of stuff with the, the other thing that went on, which is interesting. But just the fact that I used to have those kinds of nightmares as a kid just kind of took it to a whole different level. I think if I'd have just had that one experience, I would have tossed it off as I was just, yeah, dreaming, hallucinating, sleep paralysis, blah, blah, blah. And then actually, I was saying earlier that I kind of got more information. Last year, we had kind of a family reunion out in Kentucky, and my I've got an aunt who was there. And she, when we were growing up, she lived in town and too, and she used to babysit for us when mom and dad would go out and stuff. And we got to talking about this whole thing. And my aunt, she was there the night that I talked about him being on the end of the bed. And I did not know that. I thought it was mom that and stuff, but she got to telling me that she was babysitting this one night. And she said, I was screaming bloody murder in the room with my brother. I think, yeah, it must've been the brother. Well, maybe, yeah, it had to have been. And apparently I don't think, I don't know if he woke up or not. He must not have, which is odd. But anyway, my aunt said that she came in and I was freaked out on the bed. And I, she said, I kept pointing to the end of the bed, yelling about this thing. And she saw nothing. And she said she just ended up scooping me up out of bed and took me in the living room. And she said, I got back out and she laid me down on the couch and I went back to sleep. So that, I don't know. Could I have been dreaming then? I don't know. And just not fully been awake. And But I don't know, whatever it was I saw, it was, it was freaking me out. I mean, that blocky, stark, stark white face. That, that Have you ever yeah. heard anything similar or read anything similar to that at all? Not specifically, though. I've, I've been playing and paying close attention to the Mr. McKellen and his owl thing and, and stuff. Cause it's, it's kind of, it, it wasn't owl shaped in, in any way, shape or form. It, like I said, it was, it was kind of a blocky face and it seemed to have like a, just a wide dark slit for a mouth and then black where the eyes were and no real nose that I could discern. Yeah, that'll get you. Okay, so when when it comes in, now do you do you actually rec you, you don't have a memory of what it looked like when it came and sat on the bed. You just know no. that it you're hearing that the you know yes, aunt that and was the mother just a story. knew that it happened. Yeah. Yes, that was just stories. Though mom said that it happened multiple times. Oh boy. Yeah. And then like I said, I I didn't not know that it was my aunt that was actually there at the time, which was pretty interesting, actually, and pretty kind of added more weight because that's one more person that, you know, there was something going on in there. Right. Kind of thing. I just wonder if play devil's advocate and go, okay, sure. well, you know, he's a kid and he's dreaming this up. I don't even know where yep. you would get an image quite like that to... Well, and that's, yeah, that's what bothers me too, because I, I'm totally with you. It's like okay, you know, aunt comes in and I'm just screaming and then, you know, and I say I see something and she takes me out of there and I laid back down and I go to sleep. That sounds like a kid just having a night terror or that kind of thing. But the fact that I called it a moon man and the fact that I saw something similar when I was an adult, that's, that's the freaky part. Yeah, that's the part that's getting me. It's like, why Why did it return? Why did the experience right. return in right. your 20s? Yeah, and it was just that one time as far as, you know, that I'm conscious of kind of thing. It's Well, just like I'm, Mike's, you know, the, the whole, I want to mention the cliche question, have you ever had missing time? I have not that I'm aware of. I say I will. I will also say, though, too, that after that experience, I think I pretty much 
keep shades down and stuff over my windows and I don't sleep next to windows since that adult occurrence. So it's, I don't get too many chances to go peek outside in the middle of the night or wake up and look out the window in the middle of the night. Cause I, I am very conscious of where windows are at when I'm sleeping. And I, I think it's interesting too, that in my bedroom that I chose to put my pillow where I'm facing the window and not have my back to the window. I don't, I won't sleep under a window and I won't, you know, we in been in several houses and it's like, I won't pick any position that is where I'm sleeping directly under a window or, and like I said, if there is a window, I I've, I've got the shades down. I do not sleep with open shades. Even to this day. So, yep. So I know that has affected me in that way call it a trauma or whatever you want, but I don't sleep with, even if we've got a window cracked or something like in the, you know, early summer and don't need the air conditioning, shades are down. There's something across the screen so that I don't see out and it's going to make a bunch of noise if something is at the screen. Well, see, and that adds a little bit more weight even to me as well, because listen, I've, I've had some really truly freaky terrifying dreams in my life and I've never had them s stick with me enough right Even if, and I've had reoccurring dreams stick with me enough to where it alters you know something that, behavior like, yeah like covering See, a window yeah and that okay it's good talking about this because it does that it adds like you said it adds a little more weight on my end too because it's not it I, something happened and it was significant enough that it affects my behavior <laughs> right in every <laughs> single clinically. house that you move to and doesn't yeah. it sound very much like debbie and her in the elemental episodes she's right. the same way i mean there's m yeah. more so this specific window in her home but when even yeah. she went on a vacation I to that. Yeah. yeah she's like i don't go walk over to windows and do these look out at night and it's that's exactly what no. you, you said you're like i don't go wandering right. around the windows no and i don't and and like i said i have been very conscious of i don't put my back to windows and i'm conscious of where windows are in in places Huh. See, I wonder what that aspect is, though, that you, you'll you face them. I mean, they have to be covered, sure. but you want to face them, but you don't want to have your back to them. I guarantee there's something no. that you don't consciously remember that happened with your back yes. towards a window at some point. I mean, I don't want to uh, right. creep you out, but I'm, I'm sure you put that together, <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yep. <laughs> like who tapped on your shoulder and you turned around. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there was there's something at some point then that you're like, well, even if it's covered... I will not have my back to it. No. And that's, yeah. And then, and that is, yeah, I, I'm just ticking through every place I've lived and, and, you know, even small things like at work and stuff, it's like, I'm either sideways or facing a window. I'm not, there's no way I will ever sleep in and have my back to a window. No, what about your wife, Jenny? You know, does she know kind of the what's oh, yeah. what's doing with what you like as far as, oh, it's night, let's cover the windows, you know? Yeah, we keep the shades down at night anyway. But actually, in the previous house, the way the bed was situated, her sleeping position was under a window. And I chose the other side to be in the corner of the room kind of thing. And there was another, there was a second window, but it was down at the foot of the bed and actually the pillow's face so that I'm facing that window, not. So, yes, she, I say currently I'm sleeping closest to the window in our bedroom, but it's a big double window and it's got the pole shades and, and again, my back's to the wall and I tend, it's funny, but I tend to sleep on my left side, which faces the window. Or it, my right side. I mean, it's probably right good that you don't right know exactly why you choose not to keep your back towards. You, you know, already <clears throat> remember enough. <laughs> you know, and I have never, ever, ever had a desire to try, you know, regression or anything to find out. Right. I, and I've, you know, somebody, I think my cousin asked about that. And I'm like, nope, I don't need to know. I don't care. Yeah. 
I'm I'm just fine sleeping right now without knowing, and I'm fine taking that to my grave. I don't care. I it's it's just not that important. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure I'd want to know what I come across. That initial memory of it being in the window and then fading, you know, I can see, I can see that. How long did that last before it, it kind of just floated or walked oh, was, or whatever the hell it, it did was, backwards? It was a slow thing. It wasn't just like instantaneously kind of, it was, it, it felt like, like I said, it was, it felt like somebody backing away from the window, except there, it was summer. So there was grass and stuff on the other side and actually we even i think had a, a ladder laid up against the outside of the house on the outside so if it was somebody backing away there should have been some sound but uh, how how long know, had it been staring at you do you think i that's i do not know that's huh. kind of the creepy of it too i just happened to come awake and I don't know, I don't even know what it was that stirred me awake, but I opened my eyes and I kind of looked around the room first and then my eyes settled on the window. And then there was that face. And I, I can't tell you how long we just stared back and forth at each other either. It Did was, it blink? Do you recall that aspect of it? No, no. It was just like this. Like I said, the eyes were just like black spots on the face and it, the mouth was almost like a line that went across its face. So, I mean, there's no way that in your mind that you're going, th that dude looks creepy. I mean, it wouldn't cross your mind that that would probably even be a person with a, no. you know, this glowing white, not glowing, but you know what I'm saying? You could just see a right. very white and then, and then the shape. Right. And a wide face up against the window. Yeah. And like I said, it did not really have much of any kind of nose kind of thing it was just like pressed up against the screen almost mm. or maybe not quite against it but and it was just it was utterly still too it didn't move it didn't shift it didn't it was just there would it be the same size as a human face just then blocky <sighs> may it seems like it was bigger but i don't know how much bigger kind of thing it right. was right i mean that at that shape it's hard yeah. to, to say but right I mean, but it's it not like it a, filled the the whole entire no, window or anything but it, crazy. But it took up some space, mm. and like I said, it was up in it was up on off of its left side. I could see the moon in the background, and that because I was trying to figure out why it was so white, and that's why I assumed it was the moon shining on you know moonlight shining off of it. But there's no way. How far up is that window? Ugh. It's not that high. It's probably four feet off. So okay. it wasn't really like Bigfoot height. And where I lived, there was a high school next to it. And there was a few trees, but we had like a three quarter fenced yard and there was a yard behind that. And there's no real heavy woods. So yeah, I, I rule out the Bigfoot thing. And I couldn't get, a, like I said, a real great sense of detail on the face other than just the shape of the mouth and the eyes and the, like I said, the blocky head. I mean, at least it didn't grin at you or something. You oh, know? yeah, that that would have probably put me. <laughs> I mean, that would have been a whole other problem. It looking at you and then just backing away is interactive enough, you know. Right. And then, well, and we're that's of course omitting the whole coming in and sitting on the bed. How the hell did it execute that? You know, but when right. we're talking about these obvious serper natural entities yep. yeah they can do whatever the hell they want for the most part right. so walls yep, and doors and windows are of no are matter to them yep. yeah yeah but the moon man i've never quite heard anything like this and i encourage well, everyone that if this jogs any memories for you for the love of god shannon at into the fray radio.com so i can pass that on to craig because this is yeah unique. Well, and I've, you know, I've looked over the years too, or, or listened to, you know, all kinds of stuff and read stuff on similar kinds of things too, looking for that kind of stuff. Cause it, it doesn't quite fit like the shadow man or the hat man or, or even doesn't really kind of seem to fit alien stuff either. I don't know, but it seems odd, but I, yeah. Okay. But, and not to, if you don't want to tell this, sure. if this is one of the ones that you were going to skip, just tell me, but not you know not to to pigeonhole it then because what you just mentioned however sure. about 10 years later there is a ufo story here on your list 
Yeah, and I don't mind talking about that. That was just an odd thing that I threw into that category because I don't know either. But I was, we were going to take a trip to visit my cousin, aunt and uncles in Kentucky. And so I ran out and it was nighttime and I'd run to the store to get whatever. And I was driving back along this highway, four lane highway to get to the turnoff. And as I, and it's, you know, it's fairly urban, you know, it's kind of maybe on the edges of town, but there were plenty of other cars going both ways and stuff. And as I'm heading east on this highway to turn right, to go back to the road toward our house, I see these three lights coming across the sky and they were fairly low and I, and they weren't blinking. It was just three white lights and, and they're fairly close together and they're moving uniform. So I, I assume it's one thing, one craft, one vehicle. And it was odd enough that it caught my eye and I, I kept following it with my eyes while I'm driving and I slowed down to make the turn and I, I realized it's coming pretty close to right overhead. And I mean, we're not talking, you know, a thousand feet in the air even. I mean, we're talking two or 300 feet in the air. And I turn the corner and it's behind me, but coming over and I, there's this the road kind of winds around in an arc and I, there's no other traffic there. So I just stopped the car and I actually got out to look because I heard no sound, you know, a plane or a helicopter or something, you hear a distinct engine. And I got out and I looked up and it passed over and I still couldn't get any details on it other than the three lights, but it seemed fairly close to the ground and it just passed overhead, totally silent. And it was just moving methodically, I guess, kind of, it must have changed directions because it was heading south and then it kind of veered southwest. And I watched a little bit from the car and it just kept doing its thing. And so I got back in the car and I drove home, which was only about three or four blocks away. And I got in our house, told my wife what I'd seen. And then I went out on the back deck and I could still see those three lights. They were moving off into the, they were heading west-ish, southwest-ish, and they just just kept right on going. But there was no blinking like what should have been on planes. I think they have to have some kind of red blinking lights or, you know, I don't know enough. But I know, you know, I see planes at night all the time and they've got blinking lights on them and stuff. And even planes that are not the commercial jets, but you can hear the engine in some form or other. And this thing was totally silent. And I don't know, I would throw it into that. And well, it was UFO, unidentified. I don't know what it was, but it did not behave like a normal aircraft that we have around there. We've got an airport in town, like on the kind of the west side, that's probably two, three, four miles from that house that we lived in. But but it went way beyond that. It was just it was just cruising across the sky. And I wanted to say this was ninety seven or ninety eight, well before cell phones. You could open up something called yeah, like flight yes. radar and see exactly right. what was overhead. <clears throat> yeah, or even yeah, and I couldn't take videos and right. those kinds of things because that was odd enough. I if I'd have had a phone today, yeah, I'd have had a video of it. But, I mean, but, the reason I made sure to point that out is is the fact that, I mean, I've heard it on even just my show, but let alone all the other ones out there in books, that a, a sighting like that, even though it can sound slightly innocuous and benign, sightings like that can kick off things that you've already shared. You know what I mean? Like, the, it can start yeah. there. It's not always that way, but it can start sure. there with a UFO sighting, and then all this other weird stuff happens. So, I, I don't right. know. I mean, is it connected? <clears throat> maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Right. And I don't have any specific memories of any weird, you know, dreams or that kind of thing happening after the fact or before the fact, but I hadn't thought about that before. So, that is interesting. Yeah, and... And again, it, it is so weird with me. It's like, you know, I'm so totally into all of this stuff that my first inclination is never to go follow up and say, well, you know, I wonder if anybody else saw anything or if there are any other reports in the area or, and I don't know why that is. I would think I of all people would be the most to run down these kinds of things and 
and stuff, but it, it, it always seems like an afterthought of, well, that was strange. I wonder if that was X, Y, or Z, or I wonder if that could have been something otherworldly or, you know, cryptid or, you know, even the lady walking by the cut behind us, my first inclination was like, that's just some lady walking on the street. And it was just, even when she ducked, like almost veered into us, like almost hit us. My first inclination wasn't paranormal. It was like, what the hell is that lady doing? What's wrong with her? I mean, especially the UFO sighting, maybe deep down you yeah. are afraid that some of this is tied to the moon man and you just don't want to touch. That's possible. That is possible. Because, yeah, that that incident still freaks me out. It It's still, when I get to talking about it, I just get a little on edge because it just, it's odd. And it, it's just, it's disturbing to me even after all these years. It's disturbing no. to me and I haven't seen it. No, and I, I do. <laughs> but no, but really, Craig, I do appreciate you deciding to share this uh, because I do feel like there's hopefully going to be somebody out there that goes, oh, my God, I've seen something similar to that. Um, right. Because as you said, you can't quite say it was an owl and it wasn't a Bigfoot and it wasn't a person. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't quite even know what box to, to put that in. Right. Yeah, because it just doesn't seem to fit anything. Well, especially it's it's not just you saw it once at the window. Maybe we could, you know, that's a little easier to go, well, you had a dream, a nightmare, you know, as a kid. Sure. But I'm then it's that. this yeah. ongoing thing. And then there's yeah. incidents of it coming into your home and choosing to sit on your bed. So it's centered around right. you. No, right. And I do believe that. I think it's something to do with me, but. And yeah, over a period of time, obviously too. Right, and why is... the why the large break? And and in fact, let's let's maybe kick off some dust if there is any to kick off. Sure. It, it may not be as such, but why do you think there was the break? And then in your twenties, at this point, then this recidivist activity is going on. Can right. you pinpoint anything going on around that time? Nothing, like I said, nothing specific. I was in college just doing my college thing. And yeah, you're right. It is odd that why would it pick that moment to, to you know, come to the forefront again or show up or, mm -hmm. and I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of any precursor, you know, something that set it up or, and I'll, I'll keep thinking about that too and let you know if I come up with anything, but I don't, you know, and I'm trying to, it seemed like the, the initial stuff happened when I was really, really little. And right. then, cause I don't really have any memories of it, you know, like when I was preteen or teen or that kind of thing too. And I don't know, I don't, I had the, you know, the kind of sleep paralysis dreams, but I never have seen any faces or in the windows or, and I've never, you know, remembered any dreams to that level or had those kind of night waking experiences kind of things. So, well, and that's the other side of it. If he always, I always label everything. He it's, I don't know. Sure. He. And, no, if and he or it hadn't have shown up at that point in your twenties, you didn't right. remember him until that no, point. No, not at all. And then that's no, when you not. started to mention and, and your mom brings it up and your aunt brings yeah. it up and you're like, Oh my God, like this was not the first time. So you had right. already buried all of that until yeah. he or it or she or whatever the hell showed up again. Yes. I, I wasn't even aware that I had had those stories until that incident. And I asked, you know, said something about it, that it jogged something in mom's head that when I was that little that I used to have, and that, I think that's the most disturbing part and probably what bothers me the most. It's like, you know, like you said, it, to that point, it was a one-time occurrence. It could have been anything and I could have tossed it off and not even thought twice about it. But suddenly you add this history in and it just makes it all the creepier. I'm just trying to think of an entity in any folklorish situation right. that it met. I just can't think of anything. People will write, I'm sure, and I hope that you do. Sure. But uh, yeah, because you know, I've I've read a lot of Native American lore, and I know a ton about mythology all over the world. And yeah, it doesn't seem to fit any of the entities that are normally creeping about, unless it's some kind of fey thing or right. 
Was there? Do, do you remember going outside and uh, checking for you know where it stood or? Yes, I did do that the next day because it was and like I said, it was summer and it was I think fairly dry and there was grass, but you know nothing really tromped down. No, right. I didn't see footprints or anything like that because, but it was that significant too that I did try to. I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on and what, I, you know, I didn't see footprints leading to the backyard from the side of the house or anything. So no nose, <clears throat> nose print or forehead print on the dusty right? screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no indents in the screens on. Oh, the, and that, that is creepy, Craig. I have yeah. to say that is a, that is a creeper of a dude or thing or whatever. Yes. And I couldn't get a sense, uh, or when I was laying there too, you know, seeing the face, I, I do remember, you know, trying to decide if it had its face pressed against the screen or if it was just so right up close to the edge of it that it wasn't actually touching, but it was mm -hmm. that. And I, but I remember that being a thought of, you know, well, is it pressing in on the window or, you know, or is it just right at the very edge? And I don't know. But yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me that I've come into contact with, and and maybe that is why I've got a healthy fear of of that side, you know, the paranormal and the supernatural and the cryptid stuff. I mean, I'm you know, in my kind of like my cousin in that respect. It's like I kind of want to come into contact with these things, but I want it safe enough that I'll keep it at, at somewhat of a distance. Well, I would, I would say I, I would agree with you. I mean, that guy would be on my no list big time. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, no, thank you for sharing that, Craig. Yeah. It's, I, I, I think as I get older, I'm more willing to talk about it and kind of confront it a little bit and try to figure out what the heck was going on. I mean, yeah, you'll, you'll talk about it, but it doesn't mean you're, you're opening no blinds at <laughs> night and laying down <laughs> no, to go to sleep. No, and yeah. I mean, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. No, I mean, I it am, did alter no, am, your, you know, your, every, your, every, the things that you do every day. day. Sure. And I hadn't thought about that fully until we just started talking, but it, it, it has, it's impacted me to the point where, yeah, I don't, I don't sleep under windows. I don't sleep with my back to them. And yeah, it has impacted my life hmm. see but here's the other and this is just me trying to go down in more rabbit holes i suppose but sure the way that you saw it was i i mean i'm i'm getting the picture that you just kind of like woke up and you were already facing the window and you're you yes. I, I remember you were kind of like looking around like why did i wake up why did i wake up oh my god what the f is that uh -huh. so that is the original you know, this biggest memory of this thing. Right. But yeah, now you would think that, well, of course, maybe I just answered my own question. You turning your back to the window is trying to get as far away from the exact situation as possible. So maybe what right. I said earlier is null and void. Maybe it's just, you don't, you just don't face the window because that's how it originally, your, your biggest memory of this thing, that's how it happened. So maybe I just answered my that own question. Be. Well, or or I, it, it made enough impact that I'm wary of it happening again. Maybe. Right. Right. And You're maybe, just trying to avoid being in that exact scenario. Well, and maybe, maybe that answers our question too, of why I hadn't had experiences for a long time, because like I said, in that bedroom that I was in, I chose where to put my pillow and I, you know, even now it's like, oh, uh, I could have put my pillow at the other end and had, you know, slept under the window and I'd probably gotten a little better breeze. But my first inclination is, oh, hell no. Right. You're mitigating and the so risk. My, yeah. And so I was kind of, and, you know, maybe as I got older, I either kept shades down, kept windows closed, whatever, in order to keep from having more of those experiences or seeing that thing or whatever. Is it the same if you go to a, a hotel room or an Airbnb yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In fact, we stayed in Airbnb when we were in West Virginia this time because we were trying to do something different. And yeah, I, I slept with my back to a wall because there was a wind, there was two bedroom or two beds and there was a window between us. And yep, I mm. kept my back to the, 
wall. The, <laughs> the moon man. What a freaking creeper. I've never <laughs> quite heard of anything like that. Please reach out to me if any if this jogs any any kind of a memory for anybody or if you even think it's close, just get in touch. It's not, you know, nothing is nothing is too silly to reach out about. Right. No, I'd be curious if anybody else had any kind of similar things too, because it's just an odd stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> creepy. Goddamn. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we can top that. That's that's a good tone, I tell you what. Oh man. You know, and, and you know, it's funny because uh, I know I've mentioned this on the show before, but when I lived in Seattle many, many years ago, mm-hmm. over 20 years ago now, crazy to think that, but You're right. they would, people in Seattle, and I know other places, are, it's not like it's just Seattle, like they're all weird, just in Seattle, there's weird people everywhere. However, something about Seattle, there were so many people, you'd go walking at night, their whole freaking house is just blinds open, curtains open. I'm like, close your yeah. damn sh-. Like, you can watch them moving around the house and sitting and having dinner. Right? And I, I never understood that. I've just never been that kind of a person that when I, I am on display in my home, the blinds right. and the curtains are open. I don't get that. Yeah, and we don't do that. I mean, yeah, the sun goes down and we close blinds and stuff yeah. too. Just I think for privacy, but... You know, on the other hand, uh, you know, us haven't talked about all this stuff, too. Maybe it is become, for me at least, like a survival instinct kind of thing. It's like, okay, if I got a shade down, something comes through, it's got to go through the screen and the shade, even if I've got the windows open. Or it's got to go through multiple layers, and I'm, it's going to give me time to hear something. Or, though, like you said, a lot of this entity stuff they they don't seem to make noise and they don't they kind of come and go where they want when they want so but it's still protection kind of thing i mean with all of your experiences and i know that we have more to talk about but it's a good place to ask i mean considering we just talked about the moon man do you, are you of more the mind that this is all one thing that can change different sh- you know shapes and sizes and looks and m- basically m- change itself to the experiencer, right? If for, for what and it wants to get out of you? Or do you think this is a bunch of different stuff? I, having read enough and listened to enough people talk about this kind of thing, I really kind of do buy into the multi, multiple dimension, you know, theory of that we're probably one dimension of many and there are all kinds of things, you know, and that's kind of definitely where my writing's gone with that Project Threshold stuff. But I also think too, you know, let's pare it down to the Bigfoot reports or the, you know, even the Loch Ness Monster reports. Everybody has their own interpretation of what these things ultimately look like. And it seems to vary within parameters and stuff. And I wonder if, especially entities and things, it's kind of like pareidolia, but in a sense of you're trying to rationalize what you see. And if you see something so outside your norm, you're going to put what rational face on it that you can live with. And so from that aspect, I mean, maybe what I saw that night in that window was the best I could live with and and deal with. And so, and maybe it didn't represent what it really looked like at all. It was just what I was willing to accept as I could live, I could, I could function with it, a kind of thing. As far as everything that I've experienced, I think it's multiple things in different, you know, just locales and, and stuff. And I, I do feel like I get vibes and pick up on things. I wouldn't call myself psychic. I wouldn't call myself, you know, whatever, but I do tend to, I listen to my instincts and I definitely, like I said, I'll get those vibes in certain places and even with people and things. And I'll just, I listen and I take it into account consciously. Well, and this goes back to the the walk with your son and then the woman yeah. walking behind. And the question that I had, you know, the hypothetical, well, if there was a third non-sensitive person, would they have sure. seen her? Yeah. And I just wonder my, if someone else is in the bedroom with you is for, a, you know, two other friends for a, a, a dude sleepover and then mm-hmm. both of the two of you saw it, then would the third one not because right. they're not sensitive or would they or would you each see something different? 
And that would be interesting to know because I have a feeling that it would be either the non-sensitive person would see nothing because it's just they don't they don't cue into that stuff or we would each have our own interpretation there would probably be commonalities you know like when multiple people see like a ufo they may not all get the same details but they all you know they'll all see you know windows or they'll all see four blinking lights or you know there'll be certain commonalities but there's also variations within those which is and i wonder if it's because of people's levels of sensitivity that stuff Right. That's where it gets really fascinating and deep is the whole perception changes on depending on what glasses you're wearing or what right. you know, well, your personal sensitivities. And that's that's why I really liked my cousin's statement, too. It was like, you know, he said on his own, he doesn't ever run into anything. But when he's around us, too, if he's going to have an experience, that's where it's going to happen. And he just said that flat out. He's just in his life, anytime he's come up against anything weird or odd, it's always been with one of the two of us. If you had, because I mean, all of us are interested in this stuff and we're all, you know, mm -hmm. looking for answers and not that we'll get sure. any and there are no experts and blah, 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 all the same old shit I say every time. But right. if you... If you had to see the moon man again, but you, he would give you an answer to something, you know, to a, to a question or like the biggest question in the, you know, in the universe, where do we go when we die or why are we here? You know, the, the existential uh -huh. questions, do you think you'd want to go through that again? But you would have to see him and you'd have to interact with him, him, it, whatever. Would you even want to deal with that or, you know, you've already been through trauma with just this particular quote unquote right. entity. You know, because there are those kind of, I mean, for lack of a better term, light and love experiences with, let's yeah. lump him in with, you know, something like sure. that and say, yeah, well, he, he has, life. he has knowledge and he can impart this knowledge onto you. Do you draw a line somewhere and you could just like with the Bigfoot sightings, right? Do you draw sure. a line and go, I'm good. Like I've, I've seen that homie and he sucks right. <laughs> and I don't really, I'm not that curious. Right. And with the Bigfoot, it's pretty, I think I've got a pretty good handle on that. That yes, I want to, even if it freaks me out, I kind of want to have that experience with the moon man thing. I did not, I will say that it completely freaked me out, but I didn't ever feel like I was in danger. I didn't feel like my life was being threatened in any way, shape or form. And I didn't feel like it was necessarily malevolent but even having said all that i i think i'm a nope on seeing consciously seeing it again if it comes around the bigfoot i could deal with i don't think i care to re-experience that in any way shape or form well i can understand that because i haven't seen a whole whole lot i don't i don't have any super duper jarring experiences you know my one big one is seeing the shadow people yep. in the woods i'm not gonna yeah. go through that again but i've said before and i'll say it again it was just like watching a, a creepy ass film of these four things running in the woods they never turned towards me and waved or flipped me off right. or toodaloo with their hands or grinned they didn't acknowledge that they knew that i was there and i feel like if they had it would have been a very different experience for me. Yes. And so right. that, I mean, that's kind of what I'm getting from yours as well. Like, that's why I said, well, at least his mouth didn't move or, you know, it right. didn't wave at you. Same thing. It's, it's this, it's, it's creepy enough. And thankfully it didn't go to another level. Although right. thankfully you don't remember this, but yes. supposedly he visited you in, in your room at times. Yep. So thankfully right. you blocked that out. <laughs> Well, and I did have the clear sense that it, whatever it was, it knew I was awake. It knew I was looking at it and it was looking right back at me, even though, like I said, I couldn't really clearly see eyes. I didn't see him blink, I, but I had that sensation. And I think that was the scariest part because it made it real. It was like, I know it's, it knows, I know that we're, we're looking at each other. Well, and also, 
you admitted that it took you a few moments and there's no way to know how long, but it took you a few moments for your eyes to even kind of go to the window. So yes. if we're assuming that something like this is as close to all knowing or psychic or whatever right. label you want to put on it, it could have chosen to slink backwards before you actually it looked at have. the window. So it chose to let you see it. Yes, it did. That's a good point. Huh? Yeah. It, it chose to make itself visible or knowable. Which sucks for you because then that opened well, yeah. a huge can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, thanks, it definitely, buddy. yeah, it shaped things. So, yeah, it really it did. It, did. It, shaped, it shaped a lot of what became habits. And I sure. would do the same habits if I was you, if I saw that shit outside my window too. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Sorry, yeah. where I was going, no, I was, okay. I'm all all over the place with that. I'm sorry. No, but. that's fine, and I don't mind. And like I said, it it's okay. I'm I'm okay talking about it now. I guess it 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 brings up more questions, but actually, yeah. it actually it fills in kind of some things too to give a, a little more more validity for me that because of all those you know accent things like putting my backs to windows and. Well, yeah, all and right. it all boils down to why. Why did why? Right. If we're going off of that, if that's actually what happened, and he and what I said yep. is true, why did he want you to see him? You know, why, right. why, why? It's always that we mm -hmm. don't know, but that, it always boils down to that because you're going well. And then why me? And why? You know, it's all the whys. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that's good though because it does beg those questions of. Yeah, why then, why there, why that of all times? Right. Yeah, and if something gets, Just, you know, plunked in your mind, you know, later on after we, we get off the horn and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, well, there was actually this going on at that time. And not that it needs to be for public cons consumption, but sure. I mean, I don't know. No, this I one's will. sticking out for me for sure because it, it's just a very unique sighting and yeah, all the aspects around it. And, and I mean, look how much it has changed. The, the way that you do things, which is huge. It does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. And it, it, that, uh, you know, talking about like the hunters who quit hunting because they see a Bigfoot kind of thing, that it, it, it's similar kind of thing. And I've thought about that before with them, but I never even thought about it for my own self. It's just the, the window thing has always just been, that's matter of fact. I just go into a room and I find the place to sleep that is facing or as far away from the window as I can get. It's yeah. That's just how you do it. Oh, well, that's be, interesting it, it's to me because I your new normal. It is, and it, it's interesting because I've never been. I know I do that, but I haven't really thought of it consciously in these terms until just today. Hmm. Yeah. Can't blame you. Can't nope. blame you a bit, Craig. <laughs> That is a big pile of no bagged up 10 times of nope. Um, yep. So. Well, and the ghost and spirit thing doesn't really bother me at all. I, right. I've, like I said, we've ghost hunted before. We were, we went to a Waverly Sanatorium. I don't know if you're familiar with that place, but it's in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And actually the original ghost hunters staked that place out a couple times. And it was a sanatorium and somebody bought it and they were trying and they were remodeling it and I've kind of lost track of it now but during the remodeling process they were at least giving tours of the place and we happened to be in town and my cousin and my aunt they asked us ahead of time if we wanted to do that and so we went on like a tour or a walking tour through the sanatorium and the original the ghost hunters they ended up actually being there that night because they were helped trying to raise money for the place to re keep remodeling it and it was the jason and grant and uh, brian from you know sci-fi channel or whatever they started on and so they were all there and they were they were gonna you could pay and and go on like an overnight tour with them for like four hours we didn't do that we just did, did a general tour but that place was pretty interesting and well yeah let's, I, let's lighten lighten it up a bit and get off the okay. room man and tie <laughs> We're going to lighten it up this. with Waverly Hills. How about that? Okay, yeah, that means it's, you just told a really good story. If I'm like, let's lighten it up with Waverly Hills. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, the ghosts and the spirit thing, that doesn't, 
it doesn't freak me out. I it freaks me out a little bit when things happen, but it doesn't stick and it doesn't like, oh my god, I'm done. Like the lady that my kid and I saw, it was it's more kind of intriguing than it is a holy nope kind of thing. But so Waverly, we went, it was my mom and me and my cousin and my aunt. My uncle drove us out there. He he could care less about this stuff, but he was a good sport and drove us out there. And he ended up standing in the parking lot talking to Jason and Grant. He he didn't know who they were, but he knew, or he, he didn't know them, but he quickly learned that they were ghost hunters. And so he was quizzing them down about stuff while we were inside actually doing the tour stuff, which was kind of cool. But my cousin had brought a temperature gun because, you know, he'd read up enough to, and, and a camera. And so he was temperature gunning the place. And there were cold spot places that he ran into here and there. But that stuff's so hard to know because, you know, they're remodeling. So the heat wasn't all perfect. And, you know, and they're gutting rooms and this and that. So, but it was interesting, nevertheless. And my cousin, we were in this foyer room at one point, and we'd been on the tour for a while. And so he sat down on this bench, and then I was talking to my aunt or mom, and he gets back up and comes over to us, and he said, something just pushed me. And he was sitting on a bench, and there was nobody around him. And he said, I felt something just shove my shoulder. So that was pretty interesting. But, And he's, like I said, he's the guy who either doesn't have experiences on his own or, you know, is probably more skeptical of that stuff and this kind of freaked him out and is that something that that happens a lot at waverly hills is the physical interaction i know there have been i mean tons of people with experiences and stuff our tour guide was great because he was telling us he told us two good stories that one there was a carpenter that quit and it wasn't because he was seeing paranormal stuff but it was like Every time he had a hammer, he would set it down to do something and he'd come back and it was gone. And he would, he went through, I think half a dozen hammers and he got pissed off and he Mm -hmm. quit. Yeah. And then several months later in one of the rooms, they found a pile of hammers. Oh my gosh. And how would you miss that? Right? Like if you're. (laughs) Right. I mean, but he said, you know, according to the tour guide, this guy would literally set his hammer down to, you know, reposition a board or do something, turn around the hammer's gone. And then he said the other thing, they had a group while they were modeling in over Thanksgiving and they were, I don't remember all the context, but they brought food in and they were hanging out and they were kicking this inflatable like volleyball beach ball around the hallway. And they said, somebody kicked it. It rolled down the hall and all of a sudden it just turned 90 degrees and shot into a room. And it took them a while to go get the thing. And because it it was very prominently you know like i said it it didn't just roll down the hall it just completely changed directions and shot off into a room so though you know so we were hearing those kinds of stories all night too which was great and i had an audio recorder i listened to the whole thing and i didn't get a whole lot but there was one point during the night where the, and there was a group of about 10 or 15 of us i think i with the tour guide and we were standing in this area and he was talking about them, you know, kind of, you know, remodeling the whole place and they were tearing down walls. And he said something about either tearing down or they were getting into walls. And when I went back and listened to the recording, he says that. And then very clearly in this monotone, like deep voice, I hear what wall. And the tour guide did not respond to that. Nobody else said anything and nobody else was talking. and. I can't confirm that that was, but it it stood out against the background and it just sounded odd for everything else I'd listened to. You know, I had just turned the recorder on and let it run the entire time. So, you know, you could hear people talking back and forth to the tour guide amongst themselves, blah, blah, blah. And this just sounded out of place. It was odd. And then there was, in Waverly, there was this tunnel because they had, you know, the consumption and stuff, they had people dying on the premises. Well, they had this tunnel where they'd wheel out the dead and it was kind of underground so that, you know, they didn't have to wheel all these dead people past everybody else in the sanatorium. And my cousin just indiscriminately had a camera and he took 
tons of pictures just click 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 down this dark tunnel and we went down it part way with the tour group but not all the way we got back and he developed the film and there were like white splotches here and there on on some of the photographs like you know odd flash things that just it wasn't normal on all the pictures but there were probably seven eight nine little blobs of light here and there all throughout the pictures which was pretty cool yeah i know that's a very active location it seems like yeah, i'm seeing so. something about waverly hills you know every every month well, or so yeah and we were up on the fourth floor and they had this hallway where they saw shadow people and so he was giving us the whole shtick sh- and stuff in the story. And then he asked if anybody wanted to go walk down the hall by themselves. And I'm like, screw it. And, and so I said, yeah, I'll do it. And then my cousin, he's like, yeah, we'll go. So him and I walk all the way up the hall. And, it, you know, we were separated from the group and it's dark and stuff. And it it had a creep to it. We didn't see anything. But you go, I mean, I don't know, I know how far down it was, but we went down it and then turned around and came back. We got back to the group and this lady rushed up and this other guy and they're like, oh my God, there was something following me all the way back down the hall. They said they saw this dark shadow just up over my shoulder, just over and just hanging along as I was walking mm. and we saw nothing. So that was kind of interesting. I mean, at that point, if you're hearing that, aren't you going, oh, God, well, I don't want to take anything home. Did you, did right. they do kind of like a, a before anybody you know, leaves this, you know, whatever over people before they go home? You know what? And they didn't. And I don't think I was far enough along in my education on that front to do that kind of thing. Right. So, so who knows? Maybe I've got a tag along here hanging out with me too that I've been oblivious to. And I don't think so. I think I'd have known long before now. We don't really have. In the house we're in, we don't really have any odd things that happen. Actually, none of the places I've lived, we've never really had any odd. Like that I thought ghosts were running around, except other than my kid, him seeing maybe his grandfather kind of thing. Yeah, a hitchhiker from a place Mm -hmm. like Waverly Hills, where I know that they have some darker type entities, would not be good. No, that would not be good at all. Well, did you want to cover some of these other, there's a few more uh, left on the kind of maybe random list, like being able to anticipate your mom, stuff like that. Yeah. When I was little, I, I definitely, I, mom, like I said, mom was really into this stuff too. She followed, mom's got dementia now and it was an, as an adult, we talked about some of the stuff, but she used to kind of track UFO stuff and cattle mutilation stuff. She was really kind of into that. And so she kept kind of a scrapbook of just news articles and things, which I did not find until she had dementia. And then we cleaned out her place and moved her to a home kind of thing. I don't know. She talked about it from time to time, but I didn't realize she had been as into it as as I thought and stuff. But so she, I think she obviously had some experiences and things too from that she didn't talk about a whole lot. But I do remember growing up that mom and I had kind of a tight bond and there were just odd things. It's like I could finish her sentences sometimes when she'd be talking about stuff. Or the one that stuck out was I was in elementary school and walking home and I was, I was walking home and I just, started really thinking about cherry pie and how I I like cherry pie. And I was like, wow, that would be really good. And I got home and mom was making one and she had never said that she was going to, it was just kind of a random kind of thing like that. So. Well, that could be helpful. Well, yeah, it hasn't helped me win a lottery or anything, (laughs) but, (laughs) but there were those times, you know, it was just kind of like we clicked in together in a, in some kind of way that, you know, I knew what she was thinking and she kind of knew what I was thinking kind of thing. So it wasn't real, you know, like talking in our heads kind of stuff or anything like that. It was just like, I would just pick up on things that, oh yeah. Or, you know, mom would be out running around. I'm like, oh, I bet she stopped by grandma's and and she'd get home and I'd say, oh, I was by grandma and grandpa's place and that kind of stuff. So well, that is interesting, though, that she was that into the UFO subject and animal mutilation. Yes. That does make you wonder. Huh? Yeah. And I don't remember her ever specifically saying that she, I don't think she had any 
UFO experience. I, she, it's hard. I wrote down a lot of stuff that happened to my aunts and uncles and, and stuff because they were definitely... Yes, I definitely want, because I think that delving into family history is also important to try to even begin to to piece things together. So yeah, if if we could go through some of this stuff or all the stuff that you brought up on the family history list, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. I said my grandma, you know, couldn't wear watches and stuff. And she obviously was kind of in, she was a little more open about that kind of stuff. And but she told me a story of that she grew up in Kansas and and had a grandmother and stuff down there and there was she told one time about sitting on the porch in a rocking chair with her grandmother and the neighbor's next a neighbor next door was sick or something and my grandmother said that she was sitting on her her grandma's lap and and her grandmother said oh there he goes and then she never really explained it, but the neighbor died in his house mm. and stuff. So it seems like there's a history there. And apparently this grandmother woman could just saw stuff, you know, did a Haley Joel Osmond in the sixth sense and could see spirits and things. So, which is kind of interesting. Grandma never talked about whether she could do that stuff. And I don't know that any other people on mom's side, well, probably because they've seen ghosts and things too. I, I'll jump into my aunt. She lives out in California now, but she's got a whole history of running into weird stuff. She and a girlfriend went out to that Dingleberry Quarry I talked out about at the beginning of this when the Birdman sightings were happening in the early 70s because they were. she was in town. And she said her and a girlfriend, they drove out to this quarry and they parked on a side road and there were woods all over. And she said they kind of poked around and they didn't really see anything. But then I think they heard stuff, something moving around or something. And they got freaked out and ran back to the car. And Rhonda said that as she was getting back in, she happened to turn around and there's this big black shape coming out from uh, around the side of a tree. And she said they just got in the car and peeled out and got the heck out of there. So that was a little more validity to that kind of stuff, too, because she had a personal encounter kind of thing. And my aunt, she said she lived in a haunted house for a while where they, you know, hear footsteps on the stairs and like dishes moving around in the kitchens and, you know, those kind of oddball things, too. And I... I just remembered that, and I don't know if I wrote that down in my stuff, but my Aunt Rhonda, she said when she was a little girl, she woke up. God, this is going to play right in, isn't it? She it saw. <laughs> she, did I write that down in there about you the did. little man? Yeah. 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 Now hers, she said he was like maybe a, I don't know, foot, foot. And he was a miniature guy, but she looked out and she saw a little man staring in her window. And I didn't get a lot more detail on it than that. I'll have to I'll have to bug her about that one because she does like talking about this stuff. But yeah, so and I didn't even make that correlation till just now. But yeah, she saw like I think it was I think he had clothes and everything. It was you know I don't know if it was like a fae or something along those lines, but it was just a a little man staring in her window. And was this the same aunt that scooped you out of bed after one of the yes. moon man incidents? Oh, interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was exactly the same. She didn't, And it would have made sense because that would have been early 70s because I was born in 67. So it would have been 70s and 71 that when all this was going down, probably. What if that was just the moon man when he was younger and then he grew up? Right. And his, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Don't know. Maybe. That's a, it's a stupid hypothesis. I, I'm just being right, silly, but, but no, no, but, or maybe, yeah, or moved on or I don't know. It's interesting. Well, I mean, to, to have such a similar experience mm-hmm. trickle down through the family and, you know, listen, even amongst family members, not everybody likes to talk about stuff. I mean, just look at your son, Jack. No. I mean, you are yes. very open and you even write 
you know, fictional works about this stuff. Sure. Whereas he's like, yeah, that happened, but cool. We're not going to talk about that again. Right. You know, so there yeah, could and- be other people that have had similar experiences as well. And you'd never know it. Sure. And it's just during those weird times where these stories kind of come out right and stuff like that yeah yeah my my nope level has a lot higher threshold than my kid yeah he's like yeah he's like most of it's like nope we're cool i'm good so yeah and i've got an uncle who he's had a couple weird things he his is he had a almost like premonition kind of thing because he lived out in oregon for a long while and he said they him and some friends were out at some beach and he just started getting antsy and getting weird vibes. And it got strong enough that he's like, we got to get out of here. We got to go right now. And he basically broke up whatever party they were having and they got out. And then later some big storm hit that beach. And, and so he's had, you know, kind of weird experiences like that too. And, and he, it, I don't know if he, remembers or talk about it today but he told me one time about he was and i don't know where he was but he was going down the road in a car i think in the passenger seat and somebody was driving and the group of them were going somewhere and he saw this woman step out in the road in front of the car and the driver didn't slow and didn't do anything and my uncle grabbed the parking brake and jammed it on and wrecked the car because he was sure there was a woman in the road and there was nobody there yeah, what did the what did the friends say about that? Well, that I incident? think they were pissed off and and like said nobody but him saw it. Yeah. And stuff. So they didn't know what the hell, but he just it's like I know I saw something. Yeah, one of those phantom uh, hitchhiker right? ghostly White stories, kind of yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. So, I was going to say and I think everybody on mom's side of the family is, you know, kind of open to that stuff. Like I said, we got together for a reunion this summer and, you know, we kind of talked a little bit. Nobody shared any news stories, but they were more intent listening to Rhonda and I talk about my moon man stuff and kind of riding along with that. It is it is interesting. Like you said, some people are just interested enough to listen to other people's stories, but they're not really interested in sharing their own. And yeah. It's been my experience that I think almost everybody has some kind of experience. I don't, you know, it's not all the same. And it's, you know, one person that may be a ghost type thing, other person that may be cryptid or alien or stuff. But it, I have yet to run into somebody that hasn't had something weird. Right. And I was it, talking, it can take a lot to ahead. register that as well. Right. Because if, if you're not in that mindset at all, or, mm-hmm. or like your son is very science minded. It's so yes. it would be so much easier to just dismiss and and actually yeah. never think about it again. Right. Well, I've got a friend and I. He just came into contact because of me of the missing four one one, and I was telling him a little bit about. And I actually lent him two books um, just last week, but and he'd never heard of it before. But he's not really into that stuff. But. I was telling him about David Polites talking about at one point he was out investigating one of the locations and he said um, everything, the sound disappeared. And I don't know if you've read about that, but apparently Polites was out with this guy and they were hiking and, and the sound just quit. He said there was breeze and everything and there was just no sound. Uh, Poli- the, his buddy wanted to get out of there and Polite is like, no, let's just put our backs to a tree and see what happens. And then I think after several minutes, the sound came back and then they did their thing. Well, I was telling my buddy about this and he's like, oh my God. And he grew up out East and he said there was a, he had an experience as a kid and they were, they lived rurally. He was, uh, his family were farmers and Him and a couple of kids went, you know, just exploring this path and it turned and went into a new direction they hadn't been in before. And they came into out of it was, you know, trees and stuff around this path. And they came into like an open field and there was a farmhouse and a barn and obviously another family's, you know, farm fields and stuff. They he said when they walked into that open area, he said the sound quit. 
And he said there was a barn and he, he said it was just really odd. And they went over to the barn, they opened the barn door and he said there was a sheep skeleton inside the barn door. Mm. And he, he said they were freaked and they got out of there. And he said the moment they got off of the edge of the open ground and back onto the path in the trees, the sound came back. But that's not a story he's told, it, I think, hardly anybody. And it's like, for a lot of people, I think you have to get into those almost like safe zones where people are telling stories like this before they get courage enough to say, oh, yeah, well, I had something happen right, too. Right, because it's just so strange and random. And how yeah. would you even begin to correlate well, and, that with anything? I mean, it's so odd. And most people are going to look at you like you're nuts. Right. They're like, oh, how yeah. cute. The sound, you were just in a muted a muted zone. I mean, that right. that's one of my favorite episodes of that I've had is the muted, the okay. muted places. I don't remember what number yeah. that was, but I, I haven't brought that up in a long time, but that was I, these, these places do exist where, it, it, and you can be, this was somebody that was around other people and yeah. they could hear seemingly just fine, but he was just in this other, other place somehow. And it was right. no sound and no one was reacting to him yelling or anything. So, you know, is that what's going on with the 411? Right. I don't know. And this is silly, but it just totally jogged memory too. There was a time we were camping in pipe stem and my cousin's friend, I don't know if he went up to the shower house or what, but it was my cousin and I sitting in camp. It was about five, six o'clock at night. We're sitting in camp chairs talking I hear a crow up in a tree, con, 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 and stuff. And all of a sudden, that quit, and the sound quit. We're just sitting there. And we'd read the 411 book, so we'd, I mean, he looked at me, I looked at him. We looked around. We're in a campground. We could see no other people, though there were RVs and tents and stuff. And I don't know if they were, you know, but we heard no sounds coming from there. We knew, heard no sounds where we were at, where our campsite was. We were kind of up on a hill and there was like a rocky cliff off the side. He and I get up out of our chairs. We're looking at each other. We're looking around. And it was funny because both of us looked at each other at the same point And we're like, nobody, we don't get out of each other's sight. I mean, that was a conscious thing. And like I said, we'd read the 411 and we'd read that account. But we stood there for probably five, ten minutes looking around. We never saw anything. And then all of a sudden the sound came back. So it was completely silent for five or ten minutes. Yes. Well, it was creepy. completely dead silent. And we were afraid to go anywhere because, I mean, like I said, we were kind of on a the sort of a – it was – it was flat, but then off one side, it dropped down to rocks and there was a horse trail below and stuff. But uh, like I said, we got, we, I don't think we ever got within uh, further than 20 feet apart. We were, and we were like checking back on each other, like every half second, because it was, you know, we'd read enough and listened to enough of this nonsense that we were like, okay, yeah, we're not going exploring at all. We're well, just that's just right like here. what you were saying about David and the guy that he yeah. was out with. The one guy wanted to leave and David's like, nope, yes. we're just going to back against a tree. We're going to sit here and just chill out. We're not going to, we're not going to try to do anything right. right now. Yes. Because it is almost like you walk into uh, essentially a, what they call it, you know, like a thin place or something. Uh -huh. and I don't know. I need to write that down in my book because I had forgotten about that, but that, that happened and it was weird when that ended the the crow started calling again too now was it was it the crow finished its calling and then it got quiet or did it just get like cut off you know and i don't know because i wasn't fully paying attention to it right. it was just all of a sudden the crow quit calling and then we both immediately became aware of the fact that there was something wrong mm -hmm. and there, there was no sound because he was at my cousin he's like what is going on? And he said, I don't hear anything. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't either. What the hell? See, and is that something that had moved over, quote unquote, over you? Yeah. Or was it that spot itself, right? I mean, I don't, and I, it, it never happened again. And we, we camped in that place several years in a row. So it wasn't like something that repeated. Mm, okay. So yeah, maybe it is something that moves around at will. And maybe it is. I don't know. But mm. 
At least, uh, you know, at least the list. addendum there isn't like, hey, I then we saw the Glimmer Man and you know, the, the <laughs> right, predator or, type thing, which also goes along with some of the 411 stories. Well, and that's, you know, and I've even, you know, like Bigfoot and stuff, sometimes the woods get really quiet when right. it's getting close. But, and we were kind of looking in, down into the trees and stuff and we didn't, we saw nothing <clears throat> and we didn't see any, yeah, like glimmers or that kind of thing. So. But, yeah, that that's yeah. cool. See, see what happens when, the, and I know that that's what happens right. with the listeners out there. They're like, "Oh man, that just poked something in my brain." Well, and that's been my experience. It's like there've been a couple times, you know, even like at work and stuff. And I'll, you know, because I'm the one, I'll bring up something weird, and and then somebody also offers something and say, "Oh yeah, there was this time, you know, and blah blah, this weird thing happened." But it's it's like people got to get in that comfy spot. Well, yeah, and again, not to be the dead horse, but if you were not you, and if it was, I, yeah. it, was your friend sensitive? Well, of course, it doesn't matter because that's the point you made earlier: is that if a non-sensitive friend gets with you, then they have experiences. So, you know, take right. let's go with two non-sensitive people. Would they have had that experience? Yep. Right? Would they? Don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be cool to, I mean, pick a couple of extremely haunted locations. And then send in people who, you know, ahead of time, we know these people are kind of sensitive to this stuff. Let's see what they run into. And we know these right. people either don't even buy into this stuff or they are not sensitive like my cousin and send them in and send them in with different people and see what. Right. Different amalgamations of, of sensitivities yep. and beliefs because uh -huh. that can play into yeah, it too. Like the whole. Sure. What what kind of glasses are you wearing? You know, uh, yeah. because two different people can see the same thing and go, "Well, that is demonic." Oh no, that was yep. so, you know, hell, even Bigfoot, you know, can get sure. labeled something demonic by some people, which they could be right. I don't friggin' know, but that's that's the the reality of this stuff is it's who is looking, who is reporting it. Right. And I would guess that people who are not into this stuff or don't want this stuff, if they do run into something, they're going to pass it off as something else and block it out pretty fast. Oh, heck and, yeah. yeah. And they're, because they don't want to deal with it and they don't want to think about it. Well, and, and depending on the level of fright, even, sure. even right. if they feel like they're in a safe space and this came up at, like, say, a dinner party or something, or even with their best friend, they may never bring it up ever, ever, ever. They may li right. even listen to shows like this because they know something happened, but it's a little yep. buried. I get it. But they'll never bring it up. Yes. And they don't want to. And I get that. I, like I said, this Moon Man thing, I have, it's something I rarely talk about, and it's something I don't like to spend a lot of time thinking about. Why, you're so I happy that I beat the shit out of it today, so I'm <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> nah, I'd, I'd have shut it down. If, uh, okay. It was funny, <laughs> but you know, too, that I was hemming and hawing over this one because it's still, it's still a, a thing, so I just hope I get to figure out what it was when I die. I know, and that's the thing. It's you're kind of going. Do we get any answers when we cross over? You know, when we go through the roof of the house, like your great grandma right. saw. You know, I mean, do we get anything from the? I say, I think the other. I don't know if you think other things. That's fine. But down in Joplin, Missouri, there's a long stretch of road, and I I think it's a fairly famous one. But there's a Joplin spook light. I've been there twice and it was, it was actually pretty cool. And, and that didn't freak me out. We, and I was a kid when we did that. I, we used to go visit my uh, family in Kansas cause I had a great aunt and a great uncle and a great grandma and great grandpa down there. And, and we would go visit them. I don't know, maybe every five years or so from Iowa. And, and more often than not, my great aunt Cleo, she was kind of a pistol and, she loved to go down to this place. So we, we went twice when I was a kid and it's just a long, dark stretch of road and you'd park your car by the side of the road. And at some point in the night, you'd see this really bright light down the road and it would get closer and farther away. And sometimes it hop to the other side of the road and hop back and just all kinds of things. And, and nobody really had a good explanation of what it was 
my mom and aunt, they walk down the road trying to, you know, catch up to it or get closer to it. And then they said, you know, as they would go down the road, it would just get farther away or disappear or stuff. And then they'd come back, they came back and then it reappeared and which it was pretty cool. I, I, like I said, I saw it both times we went and we would stay out there for a couple hours just watching the thing. And it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, those sound quite interactive. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And I know that particular one, they had, you know, Army Corps engineers out trying to rule out, you know, mm -hmm. headlights from nearby highways, but there's just nothing out there and, you know, on the swamp gas and blah, blah, blah. But they don't have a really good explanation for what it is or why it is. But well, and in the same one, you mentioned that your dad actually had a UFO sighting. Oh, yes. And I had forgotten about that, which, you know, begs all kinds of questions. But and he grew up in Iowa City. And so this happened in Iowa City. And it was and I know there's a I think Longfellow School is where it was at. But he said he was, I think, kid, maybe teenager. I don't know. But him and a bunch of guys were on a football field just playing, you know, football and stuff. And he said that while they were doing that overhead, this oblong traditional cigar shaped thing stopped over the field. And he said it was pretty, you know, it was a ways up and it just hovered there like above them for a long amount of time. And then, and then it just shot off and it was gone. And that was pretty interesting. And that was really the only paranormal supernatural weird alien thing that he ever talked about i i never got a chance to ask him if he had other experiences too which would have been interesting because his side of the family didn't talk about that stuff or weren't didn't seem into that kind of stuff well and even you kind of mentioned earlier speaking about waverly hills he actually wasn't really into that stuff too much no no i don't think so so that was like I said, dad's kind of one experience that I'm aware of, and there could have been more. He didn't talk about that kind of stuff either, though. I say him and mom were kind of into the new age thing. Mom read tarot cards and, you know, they had a couple of groups they would get together with and do, you know, kind of check into those things and do different stuff. So I think dad had at least some interest, which... Maybe he had more experiences and he just didn't want to talk about those things. But now that's pretty much everybody in your immediate family having UFO experiences. Yeah, actually it is, isn't it? Which is, I'm going to have to go back to aunts and uncles and see if they've had any UFO stuff on mom's side. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really cool to find I out. I will. I'll let you know what I find out. I, I can't believe Rhonda my aunt who was the there with the moon man stuff didn't have some kind of experience. I just can't believe she didn't. I mean, Hey, like I said earlier, all of this could be tied into the same thing and everything it outside the windows is an alien, just changing, changing shape. You know, Rhonda saw an alien. You yeah, saw that the moon guy. man's an alien. Who knows? I mean, it, or it could be completely different things. Sure. Why not? Now, if he's that tall with Rhonda, and I know that you even said in the email you don't have a ton of information about this, but was he standing on the, on the sill? From what I remember of their old house, he must have been. And I don't think they had tall windows either. It was like a one-story little place. That, mm -hmm. So it was not like, you know, it wasn't, yeah, like eight feet off the ground or anything. It was just just what it was, you know, just kind of like, I think, your standard house. So. Just so creepy. Just anything or anybody right. creeping, even if it's a per. and obviously yours is not a person, but if, even if it is just a person peeking in the windows is not a good situation. So no. all of it can no, just buzz off. I was say, and I, I'm probably biased, but I think, I mean, some of the creepiest Bigfoot or Dogman sightings to me uh, is stuff peeking in through windows. Right. They just come in too close. So you're like, there's boundaries right. guys, and you're not respecting right. the boundaries. And like I said, I'm obviously biased, but <laughs> I still think it's just creepy as hell. Cause you're <laughs> right. It's, it's invading your personal space then. And then it takes it to a whole new level. Well, and I think that's the, 
when you boil it down, that's why it's just it, your experience with with double M there. Moon Man mm-hmm. is just it. It's a violation because you you know yeah you didn't you, yeah you didn't close the blinds or the curtains if there was such things over those windows. But right. for him or it or she to be peeking in the window was just a, not right to do. Not that I think that no. it gave a shit. Not that I think that it has the same morals or whatever values right. that we do. But that's what it boils down to. It was yep. you didn't feel the need to close them. And now every night, wherever you go, you do. Yep, and that is that is fact. All right, so here's here's somebody. This is not. It looks like it's a friend, Bill Meyer. This is another UFO oh, yeah. story. Yeah, and I don't. I think this t- took place in Iowa City, where I'm at too. And he was. I don't know what happened to him. I was probably adult when I he told me this story, but. And I know exactly where he's talking about, and I gave details, but he said he was walking that in this area. There was a set of railroad tracks nearby, and there was like a factory or something, but he was walking in this area, and he said he saw a craft land in a field, and he, he referred to it as a flying saucer. And the odd thing was, I mean, he didn't give me a lot of details, and he got, I mean, he was tearing up while he was talking about it he was telling me about it and he was getting teary-eyed and and he he was still upset by it and he just he didn't have a lot of details he didn't even talk about it leaving or you know what he did he just he was talking about it which is even more disturbing to me that you know he didn't he didn't say whether he saw anybody he didn't say whether it opened up he didn't say if he ran out of there he was just like i saw this in a field and and so i i suspect with him something more happened there too though i don't know what isn't that funny that and i've i've heard situations like that where you're kind of going i i've had someone else say you know it wasn't even what they saw it was who was telling me and then the fact that they seemed guarded as you say means yes. that there's probably more to the story that they are terrified by yes and he may have blocked it out or or just doesn't remember any of it you know kind of thing and you know kind of like the betty barney hill case and so many others of they see something and then you know they just kind of wake up later or and he didn't even offer that you know it was just like and i i think we were talking about ufos and that and it was like I said, kind of a safe space, and he just kind of opened up about this thing. But the fact that he was tearing up over it and it would it it disturbed him bad. Yeah, I'll bet if he sat down and really tried to, as you say, as long as there wasn't something blocked out, whether that's b- from his own mind protecting itself or yep. outside forces, right? We you right. can talk about screen memories and, you know, yep. you forget things or whatever, but for him to, if he was able to sit down and kind of vomit all of that out, you know, mm. some people just, they don't want to deal with that. And I don't blame them. No. And that's, you know, and that's, you're right. It's, I, I think at the end of the day, it's how, how, how you want to function. And, and I've I've listened to Ryan's podcast quite a bit, and you know, and listened to some experiences and stuff, you know, and and some people really need to know, you know, and they want to do the regression and they want to mm-hmm. dig into it as deep as they can. But I'm not always convinced that that I think on for some people maybe it's helpful knowing, but on other people it, it seems like it's screwed things up even more by knowing and. I, or at least that's my take on it. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what the true truth of my moon man thing was, but like I said, I'm content with it as it is. And it was some experiences and it is what it is, but I, I, on that particular front, I don't need to know the full truth. Well, and the problem I think with regression is that even if multiple things come out, who's to say that they didn't just put those in there too? And that's you See, know, and good that's, or bad. Yeah. And that's part of that too. You know, it's like the, you know, 
you are so open to suggestion during those kinds of things. It depends on how people ask questions. And, oh, you know, well, I see it. You're that's interesting. You're taking it as the therapist may be leading. I meant that the, oh. the phenomena itself was like, oh. well, just in case they dig in, we're going to put those in there. But that's still oh, not what right, right, even right. happened. But no, your your point is extremely valid, too. No, right. And I, I see what you're saying now, though, too. And it, it is. It's yeah, it's there's stuff could be in place in all kinds of ways to keep things. I mean, there's a, a million different tendrils with all this stuff. And that's why it's it's right. fun to talk about, but also maddening to talk about. Right. Because there's no real clear way to get to the bottom of anything right. either. And yep. Until maybe we throw float through the roof of the house and then maybe we'll get some answers. Right. Who knows? <laughs> right. Or we do blast a hole into another dimension or mm -hmm. something. And yeah. You walk into some... the quiet place. Yep. <laughs> the quiet place that so far no one has answers that comes out of the quiet place. Right. That we know of. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty freaky. Okay. So there's a couple little tidbits here left. One okay. is the your grandfather. <sighs> him. The, the voice. Oh yeah, and he's an he was an interesting guy, and I liked him a lot. I mean, we got along great, and I, like I said, my grandparents grew up like six blocks from us, and so we were down there all the time. And Grandpa didn't. I suspect he had more experiences and things with a lot of different stuff, and he just never chose to talk about them. But I do remember, like. When I was in college, him and I got really close because he retired, but he loved to read. And I was into science fiction fantasy and he did too. And I didn't know that until I got older, you know, like teens and stuff. But he, he read, you know, Asimov and all the greats. And he read the, he was reading science fiction fantasy magazine. So during college, I basically carted my entire, entire library of books down to him in pieces. You know, I'd send, give him a couple novels, but I'd go to class and then, you know, get off and then come to his place and we'd sit and talk about books, you know, the stuff we jointly read and, you know, he'd give me his take on stuff, the ones he liked and didn't and stuff. And then with grandpa, he, he must have had some kind of not training or anything, but he knew enough about, you know, or he thought about, you know, beyond this world and stuff, but he did tell me a story one time about he was in a, I don't know, he tried to mentally reach out and I, you know, I don't know if it was meditation or, you know, something along those lines. And he said he, he got so far and then he said he honestly heard a voice in his head that said, stop and go back. And then he came out of it and it, it scared the crap out of him and he never tried anything like that ever again. He, he was very adamant about just, no, I'm done, whatever. And cause he didn't know what that was and he didn't know what he encountered and what the significance or what it even meant. I mean, talk about being, I mean, powerful makes it sound strange, but just having a gift like that, being able to go, you know what, let me try this and to have it happen. Right. I mean, well, and it makes, it begs the question if he tried it more than once. Right. And I'm wondering if he did to get to that point. But he was, you know, he was just that older generation too. And I, again, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the kind of person people just feel comfy opening up to about this kind of stuff. Because people always seem to tell you me those things, though I will talk about that stuff too. So, and people know I write like horror and, and science fiction. And so I'm kind of into that. But I do seem to have people just tell me their stories sometimes. I mean, have you like, ever tried anything like that? Like meditation or astral projection oh yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. And I've, I don't know that I've ever really gotten anywhere with it. I've never tried what he tried to really push boundaries and things. And I, and I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not really new age, but I've read, I, my parents grew up, they, both had a very healthy distrust of organized religion in all shapes and forms. So they really, religiously, they just encouraged us to find our own path. And so high school and college, man, I was taking all kinds of 
religion classes. I took classes on the Bible, but then I was also digging into Eastern religion and I was taking philosophy. So I have read just a ton of crap of things and they're just all kinds of really interesting stuff out there. So I think my perspective of things is a lot different than most people, which is fine. It works for me and I don't care if anybody else believes what I do, but I buy into meditation and I, I think you can connect with, you know, higher selves and stuff like that. But that, you know, begs the question, who or what was telling your, your grandfather, right. uh, knock it off, go back too far. Nope, nope, nope. And why? Yeah. That, that's to me, the, almost the bigger question is like, well, what was he intruding on that he, was it that because maybe he wasn't ready for that or was it he pushing into something he shouldn't for whatever reason or, and, and like you said, and then, okay, what was this entity that told him to knock it off? Well, yeah, because I, I think part of the theory behind at least ast- straight up astral projection is that you have this umbilicus that you're supposed to, you know, tether out from, think of a a spacewalk situation and, you know, you're not supposed to to pull too far on that tether or try to go beyond. Yeah. That's a good point. So maybe he was pushing to the end of things. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Right. But I, I mean, it's like kind of going, has anyone ever gone that far but then what happens to your physical body is that dying in your sleep you know what it was right what is that? well we don't know yeah and of course now this begs another question i have to go ask my other relatives if he ever told them that story i'd never thought about that before either but maybe i'm the only one that knows that story i don't know could be but maybe there's hmm. other little pieces to the puzzle out there That'd be well cool. that's what i'm thinking too like i said i stumbled across Rhonda and, and yeah the other piece of the moon man i'm i'm gonna she's gonna get a big old email now <laughs> <laughs> i mean i just think it's especially cool that she was a part of your story as well and then she i do too experience. because i never i thought it was just mom i thought when she talked about that she told it in such a way that it made me believe that I came running into her room and told her what was going on and she either tossed it off or, you know, she never gave me too many details about that either. And she never said that it was my aunt, which was kind of a cool, another, you know, witness, another source to the, you know, kind of give validity to the whole thing. Well, not only that, but especially since this had been an ongoing thing when you were young yes. and then there's the break and then it happens again in your twenties. Right. I would imagine there's probably quite a bit more to the story because they were trying to protect you. I mean, they don't want to, see, you're already terrified of the goddamn thing. Why would they want right. to then expand more uh, on this no, and, right. and scare you more? So maybe, well, maybe you don't want to ask any questions then. <laughs> right. Well, and I, I, I will go back and ask my aunt because I, I think she'd tell me now if there were other right. things associated with it. And I'm going to ask her about her little friend too, that she saw in the window. Cause that seeing those kinds of, I never even considered a correlation between those two or if there is, I don't know. Right. If there but, is. Right. But I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I probably never even would have thought about that. Well, I'm looking forward it to is. hearing any updates if there's <laughs> any tidbits on the Moon Man situation. Right? No, and I, I will share everything I get. I don't mind that at all. It's, But, you know, yeah, it it's still that same idea of, you know, seeing something out your window, watching you kind of thing. And that's, yeah. And who knows, maybe I just glossed over that aspect. Mm. Creepy. Huh. Creepy, yep. creepy, creepy dude. Well, Craig, thanks for all your time today. <laughs> I don't mind. It's spilling fun. the beans on the moon, man. Please, again, anybody that has any uh, thoughts or similarities in stories, oh, my God, please reach out. Shannon at IntoTheFreeRadio.com. But, Craig, please let everyone know where to find the Project Threshold series of books and let everybody know if they're, you know, if, if you want to or if there's sure. anything coming up in the future, if, if it's not a top secret thing. Sure. Yep. Project Threshold is a science fiction horror series, and it's, it is based around the idea of multiple dimensions and 
project threshold is a group that tries to keep this stuff shut down, remove entities, kill them, incarcerate, or drive them out so that us normal people can just live our lives. And you can find out about it at projectthreshold.com. It's actually a serial of four books that's, the fourth one's just come out and you can find them on Amazon, Apple Books, just type in Project Threshold and there's Team Berger, Team Talese, and Team Riker with an I. And it's a set of stories that all kind of connect up by the finale. So it was a lot of fun writing them. And it really, my basis in cryptozoology and paranormal and all my experiences, I have no doubt they, you know, played a hand in shaping wanting to write this kind of set of stories. So yeah, I would, thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah, I would hazard to say they definitely did. And up next is oh, yeah. the Moon Man series by Craig Crowley. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm actually working on the second set of uh, Project Threshold stories right now. I've got about seven or eight done, and I've got a theme, and I know where I'm going with it. It'll probably come out next summer, fall, probably like this one did. And I'm also publishing short stories all the time. I've, If you go on Amazon, I have an author page, and everything I've published in the last three or four years is on there. So it's about 20-some stories I've published with different presses and magazines and things. So it's and, just ongoing. Yeah, don't stop. Why would you? You know, when you got all that right. good stuff in your brain, you got to get it out. But everybody, right. I will link everything that Craig has mentioned at IntoTheFrayRadio.com cool. in this episode's show notes. Well, thanks again, Craig. I really appreciate hey, you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was fun. I actually helped me kind of come up with some other angles on this stuff. So thank you. Yeah. That that's always my hope for it, you know, cause I've a lot of times there is the reticence to share and I completely understand that, but um, right. just to, to chew the fat about it sometimes can bring up other little angles to it. Sure. Yeah, no, it is. And maybe some other correlations and things. So 